I'm going to do this show a little different. I'm going to do the show on their side. So Brian, Brian said he didn't want to get married. So you don't want to get married. That's gay. Why well, do you keep know. using that term? I'm like that yeah. guy. That's, that's a not very inclusive term. You know it's that. It's very inclusive. There are a lot of gay guys. Gay? And so I'm including them. Why can't you just say you disagree? I don't like that they don't think we could take a joke. When you look at the community they say that yeah. we're a part of, they can't take jokes. The community that we're hypothetically Well, that's why they're of. not funny. Have you seen their stand-up? Oh my God. I don't think it's going to yield good desired results if you say things are gay in a derogatory way. Like someone maybe who's gay is gonna hear that and they're gonna be like, oh, this guy, he thinks all gay people are bad. I'm gay. I, I didn't go, oh. We say that all the time. If someone told me I sounded like a lesbian, I wouldn't be offended. Someone said I sounded gay, I'd be like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Welcome to the panic button. I'm Nina. I'm Jesse. And today we're reacting to the Ice Coffee Hour podcast. Have you heard of them? Yeah, you mentioned them. They have Michael Knowles on talking about his time on the Whatever podcast. And it's interesting. What no prompted you to go on the Whatever podcast? Because I have an associate producer. And he said, he was like, Mr. Knowles, you got to go on the Whatever podcast. I said, let's go. Let's go. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this show a little different. Right? I'm going to do the show on their side. So Brian, well, he's probably... On the side of the women. Yeah. Yeah. More correct than them on some like basic things. Brian said he didn't want to get married. So you don't want to get married. That's gay. You know, I don't. I, I'm, do you I'm making using, this accusation a lot now. That, why do you keep know. using that term? I'm like that yeah. guy. That's, that's a not very inclusive term. You know that's that. It's very inclusive. There are a lot of gay guys. Gay. And so I'm including them. Why can't you just say you disagree? Because I well I, I think disagree, like if, but specifically but if you, I just I agree with Michael Knowles on the guy from Brian, the whatever Brian. podcast being gay. I said that he was gay too. I said that most of the men that are the uh, the red pillars of the YouTube community are gay. And why? Because. Like someone like Andrew Tate, who said he'd rather sleep with the hottest trans woman than a ugly real woman. And then Myron said that female vaginas are disgusting. He doesn't go down on woman, women. Brian says he doesn't go down on women. It's very suspicious. I'm suspicious, and I just said gay. Like the gay alarms were going off in my head like, oh, that it's, makes sense. It's kind of like I see a penis, I scream. That makes me gay. <laughs> right? Or vaginas. traumatized. Yes, but that, that's a good way to say, like, oh, obviously, she doesn't like that. Yeah, yeah. And so when a guy says, oh, female vaginas are disgusting, vagina. it's like, what kind of vaginas do you find attractive then, sir? Right. There's only, like, I mean, now there's two types of vaginas. Yeah. There's vagina, and then there's a neo-vagina. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're saying female vaginas are gross. Oh, don't forget about the bussy. Then you must like bussy. So, yes, that's Michael Knowles is right. It is very gay. Well, these guys... Oh, oh, go ahead. These guys are not completely wrong with what their mentality is. Just because someone doesn't do one thing or another doesn't make them gay, right? But it is a little fruity to, like, like he said, not want to get married to a woman or to find vaginas unattractive. Well, not getting married doesn't make you gay. I mean, in Michael Knowles' mind, it makes him gay. Right. Um, in my mind, it doesn't make you gay, but putting that together with the fact that you don't like going down on women, that makes you gay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think inherently not going down on women makes, makes you gay. I mean, if I think it makes you a bad partner. If you are like super religious and this like goes against your religion, then I suppose I will, I will allow a pass. But other than that, I don't understand why you don't want to satisfy your partner, which which means that a lot of men like that don't like to go down on women don't know much about female pleasure and well, also how they say, little they receive they pleasure say it's from gross. just penetration. Right, and then they say it's gross. That's always what they say. They yeah, say but going down is gross on a woman. If it's gross, then why do you want your penis near it? Like, I don't get it. Right, and so I think that's the biggest difference. That's what makes it kind of gay. Is the fact oh, it's that, so gay. Is the fact that you don't want to do it because you think it's icky. But, okay, but the problem gay? that I have with calling somebody... Why are you gay? Why are you gay? You are gay. Well, you uh, are why are you gay? I have a problem, I feel like, with... At least if I'm trying to understand your motive, like your desired outcome of going on these shows and speaking the truth or whatever, your truth, whatever you yeah. want to call it. I don't think it's going to yield good benefit or desired results if you say things are gay in a derogatory not? way. Because it's not like like someone maybe who's gay is going to hear that and they're going to be like, oh, this guy, he thinks all gay people are bad. Or, Listen, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gay. I, I didn't go, oh. 
He didn't say that it was a bad thing to be gay. He said no, it just sounds said gay. gay. We say that all the time. If someone told me I sounded like a lesbian, I wouldn't be offended. If someone said I sounded gay, I'd be like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Even if someone says I sound straight, I'm not going to be offended. These two fellas, I, I think they believe that we are snowflakes. Like, we can't take a joke. You know, like, oh, they're going to get so upset if you call something gay. Well, I mean, have you seen the rest of the Alphabet Mafia? Yeah, but they're not gay. They're in the Q category. We don't count them. That's where this is coming from, though. It's coming from those people. Right. And But I'm not they that can't be offended for us, okay? Because they're not gay. We are. So they can't get offended for us. Because you're ruining jokes. No, they're not offended for us. They're cautious. Like, I can relate to that, him saying, Brian, that sounds gay. But they're not offended for us. They're cautious because they don't want to toe that line. The people that they're afraid of offending aren't yes. the gays. It's the, the activists. And I you, know. You, you shouldn't be afraid to offend them. They don't count. They're not part of our acronym. You should actually no? try and offend them. It's actually more fun that way. Agreed. An like, icon of the gay community. You know, I don't you think are? I have plenty of friends. Look, I lived in New York. I lived in LA. I went to the gayest university on what Planet university? Earth, Yale. My view is that we shouldn't recommend the uh, LGBT activism. I think that's not a good thing to Right, recommend. but it's not recommending that. It's just like I said, if, if your desired result is to hopefully find a middle ground where you can both agree on something, no, or my, at least, my desired or at result least... is to arrive at the truth. That's my desired result. But don't you it's want not for yourself or to help other people arrive at the truth? For everybody. But if you're trying to help other people arrive at the truth, calling something gay in a bad way in front of another gay person, I don't, I think, no, look, I think I, I'm not I even think saying. it's really good. I think it's really good to do because. I think people, yeah. they re It actually helps you relate to it a little bit more as a gay person. Like, yeah, dude, I get that. But they don't understand that they're not, they're not giving him this advice from a genuine place because they're not gay. To say that you know the feelings of gay people or you know that some gay people will find this to be in a hateful manner, I didn't, th I didn't think it was hateful. It makes me think that they think we can't take a joke. I in fact, in we're fact... We're delicate flowers. Like the whole concept of saying like, oh, you must be gay because you don't want to get married. We know that's not true because how hard did we fight for marriage? So we're not offended because we got what we wanted. Yeah. And it's the exact opposite of what he's saying would make this man gay. So it's not really something any gay person should take offense to. No. Unless they're sensitive and on the l the far, 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 far. This is the left for you guys. Far left. Far left. Yeah. And we don't count those people as a part of our... Our acronym. Why on would we? Our side. We don't count them because they don't speak for all of us. They speak for point zero 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 one percent. Just like they are right now, though. These aren't gays, but they're also speaking for the point one percent because those are the people who are screaming so loud that they think that all of us are like this. I don't like that they don't think we could take a joke. We used to be the comedic relief in movies and TV. Oh yeah, we were. So now, not only can we not make jokes, we can't take jokes? Well, when you look at the community they say that yeah. we're a part of, yeah, they say that we're a part of, yeah, they can't take jokes. The community that we're hypothetically Well, that's why they're not of. funny. Have you seen their stand-up? Oh, my God. That Hannah, Hannah Gatsby. Gatsby. Oh, my God. That's, that's not comedy. That's activism. It's like a, a LGBTQ... Blah blah Anon. activist <laughs> Q Anon LGBTQ activist Anon TED Talk. That's yeah. what it is. When you attack at like maybe you recoil. I don't think a lot of other people. I think a lot of people I think a lot of people, lot of people grew up on the playground saying, hey, that shirt's really gay, ha, 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 and then everybody laughs. I think everybody used this kind of language until five minutes ago, and in no way is it mocking or, uh, you know, uh, attacking any people who have... I used to say stuff like that. I still say stuff like that. How f***ing gay. Like, it's not... I know. I don't like that they just said, a lot of people would take offense to that. Like, who? Not me. Who? They're the straights who were confused... And just identify with the Q. But they're not, they're not gays. You see, I think... They don't get to take our word and get offended for us. That's, that's, that ain't right. Unless you're saying 
fag, fag, faggot. I'm really okay. I, I, I don't really care what you call me. Tacking any people who have uh, kind of eccentric sexual desires or anything like that. But even, I think it's just kind of gay. You but know? even if it alienates... I think this whole conversation... But, but imagine gay. it alienates 1% or 2% of the audience. Is that worth it? In this case, I'm... Yep. One, uh, but, but it wouldn't even alienate 1% or 2% because those 1% or 2% are so... Li um, fragile? Fragile, thank you. They're so fragile that they wouldn't even be able to click on the button to play the video. They'd be so afraid to be triggered, they wouldn't even be able to watch his videos. So I don't, they're, I, I swear they are in fear that he is going to offend people that don't exist. We live in this beautiful, in, sorry, oh, I that, you that don't exist in, in the world that they're talking we live about. In? Yeah. yeah. We live in this beautiful thing in America called a democracy. And that means majority wins. So the one to two percent are exactly what it sounds like, a minority. And I understand that everyone's like, oh, the minority, oh, the minority. But if you're talking about the minority within a minority, then maybe there's something wrong with that minority in the minority. Because if the majority of that minority is saying we're fine, then why are you so concerned about the one to two percent? You'll probably gain more attraction by catering to the 98 percent than catering to the one or two. Or just cater to the truth. Anyone that has to tiptoe around other people shouldn't be around those people. Because those are bad people. If you can't be honest and tell the truth around people, that means they can't take a joke. That means they're not funny. No if one they're can. not funny, they're usually mean. And if they're, if they're mean, you want to get as far away as possible from these people. Because they're not going to be any fun and they're usually depressed and full of anxiety because they're so self-involved they can't see the forest from the trees and they can't see how good they actually have it. I can go on forever, but I will stop. I will stop. I'm using it in a very specific way. So it's I'm using it... Attention. No. No, no. That's what the liberals accused me of, but that's because they have difficulty understanding words. Uh, the reason I use the word eradicate there is because I specifically was referring to uprooting an entire ideology, root and branch. And the reason I use gay specifically in this case is one, because it's kind of funny and we've all used it, even though we all politically correctly now pretend that we don't, we're all clutching our pearls. But uh, the, the, the other thing, we all pretend that the homosexuals are offended by it. They're not. Homosexuals are outrageous people a lot of the time and they're men a lot of the time and they can, they're tough guys. The reason I'm using it specifically. Yes. Aside from the very few snowflakes that are out there that are not tough guys. And the lesbians can take it too because we are tough guys as well. Well, here's the thing. Is even, even the gayest guy who you don't view as a tough guy has heard oh. his entire childhood oh, yeah. that he's a chick and he's too feminine and da-da-da-da. So just being called gay. Maybe not the Gen Zers, but. I'd say even some of the Gen Zers. Some. I'll say even some. I won't say anything okay. beyond that. Yeah. But they were usually... They've told, heard worse. They've, they've heard this They've before. heard worse. So simply identifying them as gay doesn't mean shit. It doesn't... It's like looking at me and saying I have long, longer hair. Like, thanks for noticing something. When I was young, I would say things were gay all the time as well. I would hear other people say it. I didn't get offended. I didn't offend myself by saying it. Oh my God, I offended myself because I said something was gay. Because of what many gay people had to go through, this is nothing. Here is because gay... Uh, refers to an entire view of the sexual ethic, a view of the sexual ethic that views men and women as uh, indiscernible and uh, substitutable for one another, and a view of the sexual ethic that is ultimately uh, sterile, that, does, that separates means from ends. And so I'm doing that very intentionally. You're I'm doing using it using the esoteric way, right? It's, um, but it, I don't think that's I so think esoteric. I think it's playing on... Uh, the, the proper meaning of the word, and it's showing people the, the issue from a perspective that has been kept from them. But when, for, you just for say, when you just say the word gay no, without any context behind it, people are not going to put that meaning the way that you meant it. They're not, not going to do all the background. Not think, Don't need to. I'm not. Why would you want to? I'm not going to be like, well, he said gay because it's a play on traditional marriage. I'm not going to do that. No. I'm going to be like, he said gay because it's. Kind of funny. And, and it's because gay. it puts him in his place. I mean, have you seen the Whatever podcast? He's con Brian is constantly talking down to these girls. And be like, oh, they don't know anything. So, yeah, it's kind of funny to call him gay. I like pussy, but I don't like pussy. Yeah, you're kind of gay. Then you're kind of gay. The end. That's, that's not, yeah, we're not, we're not thinking like, oh, what did he really mean when he said, oh, gay? Like, no, and we know. Who has that kind of time? We know he doesn't mean that he f other dudes. They've seen too many TikTokers. But one loud, obnoxious asshat should not 
dictate the entirety of our small minority. I'm glad you corrected yourself because you said should not. Obviously. Yes. Obviously right now. The more minority you are, the more you win in this world. So yeah, for them, but that's not fair. No. So for them, though, because they're a minority, and a minority, they have to win. They acknowledge it's not a lot of people. It's 1% to 2%. So why are you so concerned with those 1% to 2%? It's like having a class. It's, it's like having 100 friends, two of them the not problem. liking you. That's the problem with men on the left is they have this fear that dictates a lot of things that aren't good for the people they're trying to protect. Of, oh, he means it like this, and if you extrapolate to this. But when I use a word that everyone used until five minutes ago that now the politically correct censors won't let us use, uh, when I use that word, what I am saying is I will not ascribe to your left-wing censorship regime. And you're right. It might put some people off. It'll at least raise their eyebrows, even if they're not offended. I've, I don't think many people are actually offended by it, but it'll raise their eyebrows at least at first. But the consequence of that will be that it will start to crack away at the left-wing censorship regime, which uses a cycle of I, euphemisms to constantly change the words that we're allowed to use for anything. I would disagree. I think it would cause a lot of people to check out immediately. They would hear you they saying something you like this and immediately think, ah, oh, it's one of these guys. Anything he says no, no, My speech after has a lot that, of views on it. You know? Anything you say after that, then, you're going to tune out or not take as seriously as saying, I disagree with the concept of marriage because of this. As a lesbian, as a gay person, I disagree with everything these two fellows are saying. They're completely wrong. I agree with you where I disagree with them. The problem is that they're walking on eggshells because they're so worried about losing even this percent of their, of their followers. They're worried about being canceled. Maybe that's why they're so hard pressed on, on this issue uh -huh. with him. Maybe they're a little audience captured. Yeah, possibly. No, and that's that's exactly what this is. Are you worried about the one or two percent of your audience you might offend? No. And I love what we do here. I love a lot of people in the comments, but we offend one to two percent of them, anyways. We're here to speak the truth. When you're when you're hosting a platform like this, it's not. It's not to cater to everyone's individual needs. It's to get to other people's opinions and get to the truth of what other people think. It's not to be politically correct for everyone. And it's to be funny. Not them, obviously. This ain't funny. None of this oh, is funny. for us. No, no, but they're, uh, my point is with a podcast like theirs, the point is to get other people's information, other people's opinions, yeah. and share that and maybe discuss it a little bit, not to correct someone's opinions. Just in case they might offend somebody. Yes. To me, that sounds a lot more eloquent no, uh, and a lot more sophisticated than saying, oh. And understanding, understanding, which is I feel like the number one thing that you, you need to be if you're trying to persuade other people. But then I think it's also do you want your message to be heard or do you want it to impact the people in a positive way I think that it, you would like to get your message across? I think because after, getting attention and just saying crazy stuff will get crazy attention. I don't, think, I don't think him saying that Brian from the whatever podcast is gay, I don't think that's crazy stuff at all. We know it's not true. Uh huh? Oh, like, no, like, he might be gay. Like I said, he might be with trans women, but we know that he's not out there just like railing dudes. Like dude dudes. You, you, know, you, you know what I mean? Okay, possibly. My point with that is we know he doesn't mean you're a homosexual. That's not what he's saying. He's saying it's a little suspicious that you don't want to do that. Are you yeah, gay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gay? Yeah. Because you're not doing what a straight man would do. He's not diagnosing him with homosexuality. If I'm hanging out with a friend and they were about to tell a joke that was really funny that had the word gay in it, and they decided not to tell the joke that was really funny because they were afraid of offending me, I'd be really pissed at them. I got to miss a really funny gay joke. I'm Mine. saying any crazy stuff. I think but I'm saying just, very reasonable, but, true stuff. But just taking to the extreme and saying, I'm going to say something that will get attention, that will do well on social media, versus I'm going to say something. It's not going to get as much attention, but the people who watch it will take my ideas into consideration. I don't think that homosexuals at home are saying that awful, terrible man, he wants to throw me off a roof like the Taliban. No. They're saying, okay, he's using a word that we don't use as much in the last five years, but – a lot of people have used for a long time, and he's using it in a derogatory way because he's criticizing an action of a husband with his wife, and he's using it in a precise way because he's saying that th that view of sexual relations is essentially the same view as the gay view, which is that uh, men and women are basically the same. So 
I think it operates on a lot of levels, and uh, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. He said it's like me and a gay view that men and women are basically the same. Mm-hmm. And I will say, no, you're getting confused on the gay view. That's a bisexual's view, if even. Because I'm here to tell you, I don't look at men and women as the same. Do I expect my partner to perform some duties that would be more expected of a man? Yes. But it's not saying my partner is a woman. I can respect the differences and mm-hmm. still be gay. It doesn't mean that I'm replacing you with a man. Like, I'm replacing a man with you. I'm happy to give a really dry academic lecture, but that message is not going to penetrate. I tend to believe that you could spice up your message without alienating even 1% or 2% of your audience, whatever that may be, without using— uh, What do you mean by alienate? I think when you say the term, that's gay. I think the people who would be really receptive to you and want to hear what you have to say might tune you out at that point. Why? Because they think that I disapprove of the sexual revolution? I think that you would use terms that maybe are not— um, it's just an aggressive term. It is. is. I'd say when, did, that, when term, did it become an aggressive term? It doesn't matter how you're transmitting it. No, right? I'm just but asking it when it became an aggressive term. But that, I'm but saying that's, that's not even a part of this discussion. I'm saying it matters how it's received. Yeah. Well, all right. But I got to get an answer to this question. You're yeah. saying it's an aggressive term. That's very shocking for me to hear. For right. My whole be, life, that wasn't an aggressive term. Right, but so now when it did, is. When did it become an aggressive term? Probably in the last couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what are we going to do? Are we going to accept the radical redefinition of basic words by the left and and just play along with their words. And what, pretty soon I'm going to start calling Bruce Jenner she or Caitlin. And then I've accepted transgenderism. Because here's the point. When you use the language framed by your ideological adversaries. First of all, gay is not an aggressive term. No. I'm more offended that they are offended that he said Brian is gay because they think it's an aggressive term than I would ever be offended for him just saying what he just said. Yeah, I agree with all my heart. You accept their whole premise. I guess I'll I guess I'll alienate some radicals, but I will show the vast majority of the audience the reality as I see it, which I think is so. That's correct. that's what I've been trying to understand this whole time is that if you're optimizing for impact, you think that your route would be more impactful than maybe the other. You're route giving of- me way too much credit. It's not that complex. I just endeavor to tell the truth. Mm. I endeavor to speak the truth, and I endeavor to speak the truth in really plain terms. It presents to people reality, because if we don't use that, if we just use the euphemisms and the mealy mouth politically correct words, then people are going to continue to see a fantasy. You know, mm. I'm not saying that I personally find that aggressive. I'm saying in the way that it's received and digested in the people this is, that are— This is the key. You think the language is just fine. You think you probably. Think I'm not labeling right. it either, either way. You I, just said you don't think it's aggressive. I— Probably I said I'm not prefer, la- I probably labeling, be more but against it. But it's at least not it, aggressive. Or you think it is aggressive. I think it, it, or you're just it, not it is what the say. impact is, probably. No, I'm asking what you think, man. What, not asking, I think if someone told me that, no, I wouldn't be you know, super exactly. sensitive to it. And I think basically everyone is like you. And I think that we're all just afraid of offending some hypothetical third party that doesn't really exist. And I think that is how the mm-hmm. left controls the whole dialogue because we're all normal guys. And everyone you talk to, even if they say, you know, I'm a gay guy or I'm a this thing or I'm a that thing or whatever, I don't know what, la- what language they're supposed to use now, but very few people actually get offended by any of this stuff. It is the fear, the hypothetical fear of offending the other that keeps us all trapped in this linguistic prison living in a web of lies rather than just speaking the truth clearly, truth that we can all basically perceive. I don't agree with Michael Knowles on a lot of stuff, but damn, did he hit the nail on the head at the end of that video. Like, that is absolutely correct. I think we showed that we don't agree with him on all points. Yeah, but he was right about that. But you can be right about things and, and be wrong about others, you know? Exactly. And I don't think he did anything wrong. I think that he's very Christian, and that's he's Catholic. Fine. He's Catholic. It's the same idea at the end of the day. But clearly he's very religious, and so his views are spilling in from there. However, I don't think he's saying anything wrong, and he's not attacking anyone, anyone gay. So I don't know what the big deal is. Yeah, stop getting offended on our behalf. We like comedy. Are you gay? Yeah. And I like comedy. I like to laugh. We both stop do. Stop being offended on our behalf. We're I didn't fine. mean to make that rhyme. But like and subscribe.